Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. We are starting today's news coverage at Portmore. Now, did you know that Portmore will soon and very soon be Jamaica's 15th parish? Yes, man. Soon and very soon. So, we are starting at Portmore. That female on your screen, her government name is Sharon Peterkin, but in entertainment circles, she's known as DJ Ruffian. She is 54 years old and she's living at 8 West in the Greater Portmore area. She's also a businesswoman. Now, back in the day, DJ Ruffian, she had a very popular song. If you want to hear that song, when you are finished watching this video, type in Ruffian, save the juvenile on YouTube and you'll find the song. We are told that DJ Ruffian, she was a licensed firearm holder, but her firearm license was revoked by the FLA in about February of this year. This is due to allegations. I'm putting it at allegations, but I am almost sure that the FLA they would have obtained more information. But it is alleged that Sharon Peterkin, also known as DJ Ruffian, she was arrested overseas for drug offenses. As a result, her firearm license was revoked and her licensed firearm was seized by the FLA. Well, yesterday, Saturday, May 20, about 4.30 in the afternoon, the Portmore Police, acting on intelligence, and armed with a search warrant, they went to DJ Ruffian's home. During a search of the house, the police, they are alleging that that black and chrome Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol with a magazine affixed containing one live round and two additional empty magazines plus one box containing 19 rounds of 9mm cartridges as also a quantity of ganja and cash were found in the house. As a result, Sharon Peterkin, also known as DJ Ruffian, and 25-year-old Damon Gosmore, they were taken into police custody pending further investigations. More to come. Still in Portmore, this one took place at the G Sports Bar at the Nagohead Bus Park in Portmore. It took place last night, Saturday, May 20, about some minutes after 8 o'clock. We are told that a group of persons, they were in the sports bar when a hoodlum, wearing a hoodie, he entered the bar with a gun in his hand. It is said that he walked up to a man named Garfia Brown, but he's popularly known as Plow. Plow is 31 years old and he lived at Darien Drive in the Marina Park area of Portmore. The hoodlum, he opened gunfire at Plow, hitting him in his upper body. Plow fell to the ground and the hoodlum, he ran out of the bar and jumped into a waiting motor car, making good his escape. Plow, he was rushed to the Spanish Town Hospital by a family member where he was pronounced D-E-A-D -E on arrival. The police, they were informed and when they processed this crime scene, 12 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. And still in Portmore, a 15-year-old schoolboy named Ricardo Richards. He's living at Washington News in Bridgeport. He's in police custody facing a murder charge for the killing of his brother. His brother's name is Narlando McDonald. He's 19 years old and they both lived in the same house. We are learning that from time to time, both brothers have conflicts which gets physical sometimes. Things came to a head last night. Saturday, May 20, about some minutes after 9 o'clock, both brothers, they were at home when an argument developed. They then started to fight and it is alleged that the younger brother, Ricardo, he used a knife to inflict injuries to the left and right side of his brother's groin. Narlando, he was rushed to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was admitted for treatment in a 
serious condition. But a few minutes later, Narlando succumbed to his injuries whilst he was being treated. So their mother will have to bury one brother and maybe will have to find a lawyer for the other. Sad indeed. The mayhem. Now, listen to this story and listen carefully. On the early morning of Saturday, October 23, 2021, listen carefully, you know, because, <laughs> you know, we do things already, you know. I did a whole heap of digging. So let me start over and pay close attention. On the early morning of Saturday, October 23, 2021, two prisoners walked out of the Freeport police lockup in Montego Bay. We are told that big money run on one or more of the police officers who were on duty at the station that morning. You following me? Now, we are told that at least two doors were left open for the prisoners to escape. Well, I said prisoners, but the plan was for one prisoner to escape. But the other one, he picked up the rake and he followed suit. The plan was for Ainsley Woodburn, also known as Shartman, to escape. Shartman, he was in jail for at least six different murders plus other shooting charges. I did an exclusive report on Shartman. There is the thumbnail on your screen. I implore you, go back and watch it. Just type in the name. Ainsley Woodburn, A-I-N. S L E Y W O O D B U R N on YouTube, and you'll find the story. Short man, he was eventually shot and killed by the police. So, Alex Scott, he was popularly known as Dre R A J. He was born on January 1, 2000. Before he escaped police custody, he was in lockup for shooting and wounding a man named O'Neill Thompson. O'Neill Thompson, he was popularly known as Q and he lived at Birchill in the Green Pan area of St. James. It is said that a relative of both Q and AJ, that relative died and there was a family dispute about who should control the dead left house. Q, he was shot and seriously wounded and AJ and another guy named Tevin Ramsey they were charged for shooting him. Q was hospitalized and he was warned not to go back to Birchill because he would be killed. As a result when he was released from hospital he went to live in the Ocean View area of Lilliput. So AJ he escaped police custody on Saturday October 23, 2021. Now, a little bit over a month later on Sunday morning, November 28, 2021, about 11 o'clock, a group of persons, they were at a shop in the Lilliput area of St. James when a black Toyota Voxy drove up and stopped. Two hoodlums jumped out of the Voxy with guns in hands. Their target was a strange man in the group. The hoodlums, they opened gunfire killing that strange man on the spot. They then jumped back in the voxy, making good their escape. A taxi driver in his mid-60s, he was hit by a stray bullet. He had received gunshot wounds to his left leg. As it turned out, the strange man among the group who was shot and killed was none other than O'Neill Thompson, also known as Q. By the way, look on your screen. That's a photograph of Alex Scott, also known as AJ. So, like I was saying, as it turned out, the man who was shot and killed was none other than O'Neill Thompson, also known as Q. The same man who Alex Scott, also known as AJ, and Tevin Ramsey were accused of shooting and wounding at Birchill in the Green Pond area. Well, guess what? AJ, he was identified as one of the hoodlums who shot and killed Q that Sunday morning. So, AJ, he was now wanted for murder, escaping police custody, among 
other charges. Well, nothing was heard of from AJ. After that, in the parish of St. James, it was suspected that he had fled the parish. Well, on Friday, March 24, two months ago, about some minutes after 11 o'clock in the morning, a man was shot and killed by hoodlums in the vicinity of Steph Lane at Reddell's Road in the Kingston 19 area. As it turned out, it was none other than the elusive hoodlum and one of St. James' most wanted, Alex Scott, also known as AJ. It is said that AJ, he was living in the area and he continued with his criminal lifestyle. He was killed by hoodlums in a rivaling gang. Just like that. The mayhem. So, before we started recording this video, and if you should look on our Facebook page, I would have posted it earlier. Three men were shot and wounded in the Burn Savannah area of Westmoreland this morning. I'm gathering the details because so far, we are learning that the shooting might have been a reprise alpha. The killing of a hoodlum in the same area about a year ago. Stand by. We are gathering the details and in a subsequent video, we are going to be giving you the full story. We are also getting reports that a man was shot and killed in an area known as Forest in the Ramble Police area in the parish of Hanover earlier. Stand by. We are digging and we'll be coming back to you with that story also. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button. That's also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. And if you notice, we are now over 179,000 subscribers. We are moving towards 200,000 by August. And whether or not, you see, whether or not we reach the target, our aim is to give away at least 10,000 Jamaican dollars each to at least 20 parents to assist with back to school and we have no doubt that we are going to be giving away a lot more to a lot more parents so tell a friend if you tell a friend if you come over here so come subscribe all right now in the final story for today this one took place yesterday afternoon saturday march 20 about 3 30. hear this now that guy on your screen his name is hayende Brian Gooden. I've seen persons saying Lion they are something like that. His correct name is I Y E N D E H. His middle name is spelled B R I A N. His surname is Gooden. Ayende Brian Gooden. He is 27 years old. He was born on Independence Day 1995. <laughs> I saw we dig over here, dig, you know. Yeah, man, we dig serious. You see it? All right. So he was born on Independence Day, August 6, 1995. We are told that he's originally from Petersfield in the parish of Westmoreland, but he was living at a place named Estuary in the parish of St. James. It is said that Allende, he was a chopper. You know what that means, right? Yeah, man, he was a scammer. It is said that Allende, he normally frequent places like Mud Valley and other areas in the parish of St. James. We are told that Allende, whenever he's going into the town of Montego Bay, he had a trusted taxi driver that he usually called to carry him. There is the taxi driver on your screen. His name is Ramon McFarlane. He is 31 years old and he lived at Industry in the Somerton area of St. James. Ramon, he owned and operated a white Toyota Pro Box as a taxi. We are learning that Allende, he sports long hair and there is a particular salon in Montego Bay that him normally go to have his hair 
done yesterday morning. Saturday, May 20. Allende, he called Ramon to carry him to Montego Bay to have his hair done. Someone else went with them because that person also wanted to have his or her hair done also on reaching Montego Bay. The other person went to a hair salon and Allende, he went to his hair salon. Ramon, he drove away and the arrangement was that Allende should call him when he was almost ready. About some minutes after 3 o'clock, the other person who had his or her hair done went and met up with Allende. But we are told that Allende, he was acting very agitated. He was arguing that up until now, Ramon, the taxi driver, he hadn't come back. And Ramon knew that he didn't want to tarry in Montego Bay. All this time, we are told that Allende, he was constantly looking over his shoulder. We are told that he was moving jittery. You know what that means, right? Yeah, man, something was up and he suspected something. We are told that Ramon, the taxi driver, he drove up in the white Toyota Pro Box and Allende, he was seen walking very fast towards the car. Now, all this time, he was looking over his shoulders. As Allende reached at the car and opened the front passenger door, we are told that a guy, he stepped up to Allende with a gun in his hand. And the guy, he started pumping bullets in Allende. We are told that Allende, he jumped into the car across to the driver's side of the car and the hoodlum, he continued firing at him. And that's how taxi driver Ramon got hit because Ramon was clearly not the target for this attack. We are told that as a result of being hit, Ramon, he lost control of the car which drove off for a short distance before coming to a stop. We are also told that some police officers, they were on foot patrol nearby and they heard the shots being fired. When they made checks, they saw two hoodlums with guns in their hands. The police chased them but they made good their escape. We are learning that the police, they did not fire their weapons due to how busy the street was. The police, they were quick on the scene, but from all indication, taxi driver Ramon, he died on the spot. The police, they carried both of them to the Cornwall Regional Hospital, where Allende, he died whilst being treated. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, 14 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. We are also learning that the quick action of the police led to the capture of the main suspect in this killing. He is 24 years old and he's living at Granville in the parish of St. James. More information will be coming up soon. Stand by for that. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Jamaica, oh Jamaica, me sweet Jamaica. Crime is a mashup Jamaica. 